Today I'll be installing speed bumps on the, my JKU. Over the winter, I clearly had a little bit too much fun with an obstacle. Gave it a little bit to oom. Crush the stock bump stop. So the kit's pretty straightforward. You know, once you've worked on a suspension before, it's not too painful. The worst part is you end up having to cut the, uh, the perch here. The instructions are pretty clear. For my kit, because I have these extensions on my shocks, I have to be sure that when I reinstall everything, that full compression, the bump speed bump will take the hit before the shock itself. Uh, I'm lucky I already have these uh, extensions for the brake lines and ABS sensors, so I don't have to worry about them getting overextended. If you still have yours attached down here, uh, you may have to take them apart. I've already got my sway bar quick disconnects removed. Uh, the track bar bolt has to be released so that it gives you more flexibility. The sh shock itself gets unbolted. That allows the whole assembly to drop. If you already have some, some stock bump stops, those have to be removed before you can remove the, the spring. So I'll do that first. So on this JKU, there's a few suspension modifications. So yours will probably look different. Highly recommend relocating your uh, sw steering damper so it's out of harm's way. I do also have a heavier duty track bar. So once it's broken free, I can finish it with the impact. And keep these close by, you'll need them later. As you notice, the whole axle shifted. Uh, will allow a lot more movement as we're tearing everything else apart. So before you move a shock bolt, you gotta make sure that your axle is suspended. The shock is what keeps your axle from just dropping out. Only bolts I have to worry about today are the 18 millimeters that are on the top. A little bit more. There we go. So now with the shock unbolted, this side of the axle can droop down a whole lot more. Another way to get a little bit more flex is to actually loosen all your lower control arm bolts. Good stuff. So now I've got the bolt out, the nut. That was a lot of work for, for what it is. And now it's just a question of finding a way of sneaking it out. I know that when I, well, that was pretty easy. When I put them in originally, I had to actually zip tie it to the spring to be able to get it in. So now I should be able to move this shock, the, the spring out, just like that. Take it out completely. Now it's gonna be a question of removing the stock jazz bumpers. Now I'll move the sway bar a little bit higher up so it's out of the way. Take off the spring isolator. The instructions say to measure down three and a half inches from the top. So that may, gives me a reference line. And they recommend using some masking tape or some other type of tape to have a clear edge all the way around so you know exactly where you're starting and stopping. Let's see how well I lined it up. Very nice. I'll recheck it. Three and a half to the bottom. Bingo. So now I have to cut that off. Uh, some people will use a sawzall, other people will use a cutoff wheel. Basically, it's a question of whatever you have, and you want to make sure that you keep it as uh, straight as possible. This will give me a little bit of leg room. Probably bend it off like this. There we go. Bump stop still stuck in there. Explains why the, or is it just a lot of crud? That was fun. I have my cut. It's clearly a little bit low on the back, so I'll uh, I'll clean that up. Make it all nice and level.
getting close. It's getting caught up at the top. The goal is to have this perfectly flush all the way around so that all, all the impacts are getting transferred evenly all around the whole side. So I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit in the back so it's at the same height as the front. So now it's nice and level. Ready to get, get going to the next step. So I just have to reinstall the bolt. It doesn't have to be bolted up or anything. Just through the uh, eyelids on both sides. So that I can compress compress the suspension, compress the shock, and see if I have to put in a spacer up here. The bump stop compress. I remember that die rod is not the track bar is not connected. Now the vehicle is actually lifting off of the jack stands. There's about three quarters of an inch and an inch on the speed bump. So I'll, I'll check, see how far in the speed bump can go. If it can go in all the way, I need to put in at least the quarter inch spacer. If not, it's probably good as is. So once you're happy with your cut and you've deburred it a little bit, now it's time to fit the reinforcement part. So it goes in something like that. It's always a good sign when it pretty much lines up exactly with your cut. So now I'll just go get my uh, punch, a drill, so I can drill a pilot hole, and then go to 3 8 mount one, then install the other two. Almost. Step it up to the 3 8 All right, 3 8 bolt drilled. Some little shavings at the top. Quickly remove those with the file. There. So now you put it back in. Line up your bolt hole. Yay! It fits. And then, so after a lot of fiddling with the drill, I was able to get this to fit. A good punch definitely goes a long way. So it's a 13 mil half inch for the nut. It's definitely an imperial size for the Allen key. Can't tell you what it is just because I'm using a, a multi tool. The instructions say something like 22 foot or 22 newton meters, so it's not very tight. I don't want them to fall. They definitely won't with the uh, nut, nut certs. Space is uh, definitely a challenge here on this last one. I think I'm going to find a way to pull this out. So I actually have a little bit of room. So I've added a tool to try to give myself a little bit of clearance so I can actually ratchet the wrench. Do a trick. This is to help with disseminal metals so that there's less corrosion. It's going to help with noise. You're just trying to put a good amount, then spread it around so it's more or less even. You have to have it all the way to the top because the top part does extend beyond. So a lot of people complain about noise. I'm wondering if they've all skipped this step. Those that said that they've done this say that they're pretty quiet. And that's going to be a nice mount. Slide this into place. Always sad when most of your sealer actually pops out. So clearly you don't have to put on that thick. There's not much space. So let's wipe it down so it looks kind of clean. That'll do the trick. Now there's a collar that installs at the top of the speed bump. Tighten that down as well. So the retainer clamp only needs eight newton meters. 
so that's not very very tight and we reinstall this spring damper or whatever they call it reinstall the spring bit of finessing is required. Should pop in real soon. Okay, I want to make sure that the spring is sitting correctly in the front, that your top part lines up with where the spring is going to sit. Now is the right time to slide in the lower puck. Uh, mine already had a hole in it, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, you may have to drill one. So it's a 14 mil nut at the bottom, another imperial size at the top, the Allen key. So what I'm just trying to do here is see how, how much I can tighten it without even using a wrench underneath because it is one of those nuts with a uh, little teeth in it, it actually may stay in, sp in place without using a wrench. There. That's good. It's now the fun of realigning the shock. As it's going up, you definitely want to slide the track bar into the groove. This time I will route the bracket for the brake line. That's another Terraflex part if you're interested. Okay, so this side is ready to be torqued down. Then you can start having fun on the other side. So now that's all buttoned up, I realize that the Included bump stop at the bottom is a little bit off-center compared to what it should be. I reused an existing hole that I had. I'll keep an eye on it. As long as the spring doesn't touch, it won't make any noise. If it starts making any noise, I'll know exactly what to look for. I'll, I'll be a little bit more attentive as I'm putting in the other side. It does look pretty neat once installed. Looking forward to seeing this in action. So now onto the back. Uh, the important thing on the passenger side is you have to move the truck bar, bar bolt backwards you have to flip it so that the nut that's on the front end of the vehicle ends up pointing towards the back so it clears the the new pad that you're going to install half the fun here is just breaking this bolt it is torqued to 125 foot pounds so it can be fun to break loose and once it starts it's pretty easy So sometimes moving the axle left to right helps thread the bolt out. The important thing is you want to retorque this when the vehicle is on the ground or at least all the weight is on the axle so that the bushing is sitting correctly at the right angle. You end up with the best right quality. The axle has to be pulled towards me. There we go. I'll just put this on tight enough that I don't have to force fight with it too much once it's up in the air. So there's still a hair on both sides. So if I if I have to, it'll it'll free spin. So depending on your lift kit, if you already have one on, you probably have bump stops installed. So on this one, they're 15 mil. This is the Mopar kit. That can vary greatly depending on the brand. So just have to remove both. 
And after that, pad will be off. We'll remove the bump stop, which is. Usually towards the end, you can do this by hand. Bump stop off. Remove this, just twist and pull. That was easy. Now we're ready to start putting things together. So try to clean off whatever crud you have on the outside of the hat. Uh, it's important to have your vehicle lifted and supported by the, by the frame and not by the axle tube. That way you've gotten more distance here for droop. The part has a, a front engraved on it. So of course that's gonna go towards the front. And depending on the, the age of the vehicle, the tolerance is whatnot, it may slip in a fair bit like this one just did, which is a good sign. And then with a good old fashioned rubber mallet, you smack it a few times. Eventually it'll go in. So if you're having issues like I am right now, you can remove it. Check to make sure that there's no rough edges. I can feel a few. So I'll quickly, quickly grind. And then what I'm gonna do is inside, I'm gonna first clean it. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of grease, a little bit of wheel bearing grease. This will help it slide in. That should do the trick. Don't need much, just enough so it slides. Slide it in. Got another trick up my sleeve. Good old scissor jack. Find a, a spot where it'll clear the brake line. So I'm gonna put all of the, the force of the scissor jack on the edge where it has to pop in. There, so now I'll loosen it. Check the inside of the cup to make sure that it's sitting all the way around. If I have to, I'll do this again. I can tell right away that it's not sitting all the way in. There we go. Popped into place. Now it's time to install the new joust bumper. Uh, they say to use a little bit of silicone spray to help slide into place. I don't have any. So I used a, another lubricant. You can usually tell pretty quickly. There, that's in. Now it's time to install the bumper pad. Comes with the new hardware. The important part is the long part you want sticking out towards the front of the vehicle. Not sure why they make them these this long, but it comes in the kit. And then tighten the uh, nut to the bolt. The nut is a half inch, and I believe the Allen head is a 3 16 So once that's in, you just have to tighten them up. Well, those are nice and tight. So all I have left to do now is lift up the axle, make sure that the weight of, of the vehicle is on the axle, tighten up this bolt to 125. So now I have these two parts left to install, the bolt and the flag nut for the lower track bar, for the front track bar. is just to show how the bumps in the road kind of disappear after installing these, these speed bumps. The vehicle still gets moved around, but the occupants don't feel it as much. So it's definitely a lot more compliant. I definitely would be hitting all these bumps and holes and whatnot this fast if I didn't have it or I'd be getting thrown around a whole lot more if I, if I was. So between the speed 
bumps on the Fox shocks. It's really doing an amazing job on this uh, so so road. Thanks for watching.